In the previous episode, I covered how Adam's anger was fueled by the death of Tahir Meha and from the escalating Yugoslav repression in Kosovo. I also covered the military training camp he attended in Albania, which in turn led to his courageous defense against the Yugoslav police on December 31st, 1991. Before we continue, I want to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude for all the generous donations I have received over the years. Your donations have allowed me to hire talented artists like Ken Art to help me do what I love doing. I am also deeply grateful for all the encouraging comments which have been a constant source of inspiration and motivation. You are all truly amazing. Thank you once again for everything. Now let's get back to the video. After the pivotal battle at the Yashari house on December 31st, 1991, Adam's leadership became increasingly evident as more friends joined his armed formation. Throughout 1992, training camps emerged in the rugged mountain terrains surrounding Prekazi, where volunteers learned the art of warfare under Adam's guidance. Despite the constant danger Adam and his family faced, the Ashari home became a hub for strategic discussions and where friends and family members maintained their high morale. During the years that followed, Adem Yashari did not only coordinate various operations in Prekaz, but his leadership and strategic planning became instrumental in organizing the resistance. One such well-planned action took place outside the city of Drenas. As the morning air thickened on March 23, 1993, Adem Yashari and his compatriots waited at the Drenas railway crossing. As the rumbling noise of the approaching engine, it slowed down as it crossed the railway. At that moment, Adam unlocked the safety of his AK and aimed at the driver. When the dust had settled, five Serbian policemen had succumbed and six others were badly wounded. A few weeks after the attack at Drenas, a pivotal meeting took place at the Ashari house on April 5th, 1993, where members of Adem Yashari's armed formation and influential political activists attended. During the gathering, Adem suggested that all actions in Kosovo should be united under the banner of the Kosovo army. The proposal was met with unanimous approval, with all participants voting for Adem to lead the army as its commander. This strategic move laid the groundworks for the formation of UCK, the Kosovo Liberation Army. Despite knowing that Adem and his comrades were behind the Drenas attack, Serbian authorities in Kosovo could not capture them. 
evading capture and steering clear of major battles. Adem concentrated on recruitment and training throughout 1995, quietly strengthening his forces. By the beginning of 1997, the Uceke had grown bolder. The once hidden group was stepping into the light as tension in Kosovo began to rise. In the sweltering heat of late August of 1997, Adem Yashari and his compatriots were on the brink of a decisive operation that would challenge Serbian dominance like never before. After weeks of meticulous planning, the Uchike forces received detailed maps, coded messages, and specific instructions for their assigned targets. The strategy was clear. Launch a simultaneous attack to overwhelm Serbian defense and cripple their ability to respond effectively. On the night of September 5th, 1997, as the clock struck midnight, the silence was abruptly shattered by a coordinated assault. With military precision, explosions erupted, lighting up the night sky over multiple police stations across Kosovo. In Mitrovica, Klina, Jakova, Prizren, Ferizai and Pei, the police stations were caught completely off guard as Uceke fighters stormed the stations. Thrown into chaos and panic, the Serb police were unable to withstand the swift and decisive onslaught of Adem and his men. Within minutes, they seized weapons, ammunition, and other critical resources before hastily retreating, leaving a trail of destruction behind them. As dawn broke up on September 6th, the significant damage inflicted sent a powerful message. Meanwhile, in Belgrade, President Milosevic denounced the UCK as a terrorist organization. We were not provoking or supporting hostilities. Responded by increasing the numbers of security forces in the region. But for the people of Kosovo, however, the attacks were more than just a military success. They were a powerful symbol of resistance and a beacon of hope in the struggle for freedom. After the November chill of 1997 had settled over Kosovo, Adem gathered his closest comrades to plan their next move. On the eve of November 25th, news reached Adem that the Serbian police were planning a raid in the village of Rezola. Understanding the risks, but also the stakes, Adem gathered his fighters to outline their plan. As darkness fell, Adem and his men moved silently through the blistering cold navigating the countryside by avoiding main roads and slipping through forests and fields. Just before dawn, they reached Rezola and swiftly took up positions in the shadows. As the first light crept over the horizon on November 25, 1997, the Serbian police moved into the village. The Uchike fighters, hidden in strategic positions, open fire.
The opening salvo was devastating, trapping the Serbs and wrecking havoc in their ranks. Adam's men fought with ferocity, born of desperation and hope. They knew that every minute they held the line would weaken the Serbian forces. Yes! As the battle raged for hours, the Serbian police had finally been forced back failing in their mission to capture Abedin Reja. Although victory was sweet, Adem knew the Serbs would not take their defeat lightly. Anticipating their next move, Adem swiftly devised a strategy to disrupt their advance. As predicted, Serb military police forces returned the next day with reinforcements, determined to regain control. Early on November 26th of 1997, Adem and 22 of his best fighters arrived at the area known as Klisura, near Turicets. At approximately 10 o'clock in the morning, a Serbian military helicopter carefully scanned the terrain ahead, completely oblivious of Adam and his men. The moment the convoy entered the narrow mountain pass, Adam and his men launched their attack with a deadly precision. As the battle raged on, Serbian forces were pushed back and hastily retreated towards Skenderai, seeking shelter inside the primary school in Lausha. Frustrated by the defeat, a Serbian police officer shot the teachers Shaban Areci and Halit Gece. Since Halit Gece had received serious injuries, his colleagues rushed him to Mitrovica hospital where he tragically succumbed to his injuries. The following day, Adem ordered that the Uchika would make a public appearance at Halit Getsi's funeral. On November 28, 1997, Uchika fighters emerged from the shadows, publicly marking the beginning of their existence. <laughs> This event marked a turning point in the Kosovo War, to which a growing number of men and women rallying to the Uchika, diminishing the grip of Serbian forces across Kosovo. <laughs> By the end of 1997, the Serbian Secret Service in Belgrade had identified the points of resistance in Drenica, marking the Yashodi family house as the most dangerous one in all of Kosovo. Estimating that the Yashodi family would surrender easily, a small Serbian special unit arrived at the ammunition factory on the evening of January 22, 
1998. In the pitch of darkness, the special unit had surrounded the Yashori house and without warning, they began to fire at the house from a close distance. Caught completely by surprise, Shaban Yashori with his son Hamza and his nephew Fitimi and Besimi took up arms and retaliated. As gunfire echoed throughout Prekozi, Aden, who had spent the night before at the Laosha's residence, heard the gunfire. Together with his uncle, Osman Gezi, and other fighters, they quickly rushed to aid his family. A few minutes after Adam and his men arrived, they meticulously surrounded the Serb forces and forced them to retreat at the nearby ammunition factory. The shameful defeat marked the second time the Serbian police had lost a fight against Adem Yashari. The enraged Milosevic, who did not see idle on the loss, prepared a full-scale war to crush Adem once and for all. In the days that followed, thousands of freedom-loving people flocked to the Yashori family house to show their solidarity, drawing the attention of politicians and journalists who began to grasp the gravity of the situation unfolded in Drenica. Sie haben uns mit Panzern und Pinskauer Fahrzeugen umstellt. Wir wussten nicht, wer da kommt, gingen hinaus und wollten fliehen. Sie aber schossen auf uns, und so schossen wir zurück. Die Nachbarn halfen uns. Anticipating a fierce counterattack, Adem swiftly prepared for the impending assault, fortifying positions and reinforcing bunkers around the area, determined to defend against the oncoming storm. In the final episode 3 of the immortal saga of Adem Yashori, we will cover the last battles of his remarkable life. Thank you all again for the tremendous support you have shown the channel. If you want to help the channel grow, please subscribe, share the video and smash the like button. Until next time, Tung.